The imagery of the tree comes from sort of a suburban ideal landscape that's part of the history of Montclair. Montclair to me seems so much about a place of both nature and culture. I think there's a sense of community that Montclair is very proud of, and I thought that presenting a project in which nature and culture coexist hand in hand would be a good reflection on the community and uh, the kind of treasured objects and legacies that they seem to revel in. I love the history of an object. In my project, the silverware represents the home and the domestic, the historic treasures and relics and mementos of a different time period where eating and dining meant very different things than maybe the fast food culture that we have today. My work often deals with um, collecting everyday objects and it's made through the resources and the assistance of the community. In Hose, the Montclair community donated most of the flatware for the work. With any object, I feel like there are traces of people's identities. Their kind of hopes and desires are embedded in the object. So I feel like that infuses my project with a, a collective um, exploration of who we are as a society that comes from the community and resonates with them. Um, I'm polishing these beautiful plated spoons. It's, it's a nice act, you know? Um, I remember as a kid, I, I would do that too, when we had like Christmas dinner. It seems sort of a, a natural process. We've done it to the extreme <laughs> with tens of thousands of knives and forks. And hopefully when the viewer sees it, there's this connection of what we've gone through, um, but really like that it, it um, evokes those kinds of um, memories that are really intimate for them and familiar. Host in particular became very, very labor intensive. It took six months um, with many, many hands every day so from the museum and the community, from my end with the fabricators, interns and assistants and past students. There's sort of a collective of people, and we were taking this industrial object, you know, uh, that seems so familiar and so hard, and kind of transforming it into this very fluid, organic, and natural looking surface of the tree bark. It can go right right where you had it. No, it's fine. Lower? Yeah. I wanted to add this one, actually, to that knife. Um, this one needs to be bent, though. It, just, it, it will connect to that other knife that's there. That part is, is the fun part, really, is the creative part, you know, and to work so closely with the placement and the bend and the twist, you know, to make it seem like it's sort of coming alive. Miguel, can I see it on, on there? Does it bend this way a little bit? This tree that I'm presenting is severed in three parts. It has a stump, a log, and a tree branch. The stump deals with kind of the history of a landscape and the consequences of what have we done to the land and what existed before these developments happen. The log sort of represents the utility of um, this tree. The tree is wood, you know, and wood being something that people can use and transform into furniture to build houses for um, fires. And then the last thing is still retaining the beauty. The branches are sort of the decorative ideal of a tree. The museum really wanted um, a sculpture that would have great presence in the community. And so our siding of the work in the kind of the corner where the two avenues of the museum intersect. The viewers of the piece are not just the people who are visiting the museum, but people who are driving or walking. And hopefully that brings them to ask more questions it's about their surroundings and share stories about trees and their lives or about the uh, dinner parties and the etiquette issues that are related to silverware. And I think as an artist who is in the public space, 
I get to exercise that question in a more visible way. The excitement for me about making art um, is that I get to kind of have those experiences with other people.